I used to tell people that I didn't have a personality until I found theater. I think that's truer than I had known. Up through middle school, I was disengaged from everything. I got good grades, yeah, but that didn't fulfill me. I was pretty apathetic about everything. End of ninth grade, though, I discovered theater, and that was a game changer. Theater gave me confidence, lifting my head from my books to connect with the world around me. Through it, I learned responsibility, my roles pushing me to succeed because I was supporting not only myself, but an entire ensemble. Bit by bit, I grew compassionate. Uh, the theater community's embrace thawing within me a sensitivity that had been frozen by years of feeling as though I did not belong. Most important of all, though, theater burned away my apathy, and I became completely different. I was stronger and more capable. I was looking to the future and taking initiative. I was making my own choices and seeing them through. All of this after just two years immersed in theater in high school. And as I began to think about college, I couldn't shake the thought of what four more might do for me. So I made the plunge. I decided I was going to major in theater. I went online to research schools. I checked out books about acting. I rehearsed monologues again and again. I reached out to the people in my life to tell them about my wonderful decision. And they said, wow, kid, your life is over. <laughs> Declaring a theater major was an uphill battle for me because of what I've dubbed the notion of the starving artist. This is the line of thought in our culture that says that arts degrees are impractical. They're fluff. They don't pay well. There are no jobs. They're easy. Anyone can get one. So they don't mean much. You'll live in a shack, or your parents' basement, or be homeless. Anything you can do with one, you can do without one. Minus all the costs, time, and debt. The notion of the starving artist says all these things, and because of it, many people discouraged me from pursuing theater. Regardless of the changes theater had brought about me in high school, the overall message I received was that, for me, a young middle-class student with a promising GPA, well, to major in the arts, I'd have to be nuts. I almost gave in to that pressure. But now I'm so glad I didn't, because I've learned since then that much of everyone's fears about the arts, my own included, are misguided. Our conventional wisdom about the arts is wrong, rooted in myth, not fact. Myth number one, arts graduates are impoverished. Their degrees carry little weight in the real world, so they end up struggling. Almost everywhere you look, you'll find that the numbers don't line up with this. For instance, one study at a Georgetown University shows that the average income of an arts graduate, the median income, is about $30,000 out of college, rising to $48,000 with experience. This is comparable to the incomes of many other majors, such as the liberal arts, education, and agriculture and natural resources. Granted, the study also shows that after graduate education, most other fields do outpace the arts. But this doesn't change the fact that arts graduates have respectable earnings. They're not scraping by. Their degrees prove to be valuable investments. Myth number two, there are no opportunities for artistic work. Your average arts graduate ends up bartending or waiting tables for the rest of their life because the skills you learn with an arts degree don't help you much in the job market. Data from the Strategic National Arts Alumni Project does away with that myth. Affiliated with Indiana University, the project administers surveys to arts graduates across the country, and one of its findings is that almost two-thirds of employed recent arts graduates say that their jobs are relevant to their education. While 69% of experienced arts graduates say the same, this is better than similar statistics drawn from other supposedly more practical fields, like biology and accounting. It shows that the skills and arts education teaches, which include problem solving, persuasive speaking, and creative thinking, are valuable and broadly applicable. Finally, my favorite myth is myth number three. Arts graduates are miserable. <laughs> They're not. Anything but, in fact, they are among the happiest workers in this country. 
even as the most recent data from the nonpartisan conference board indicates that only 50.8% of Americans are satisfied with their jobs, the Strategic National Arts Alumni Project has found that arts graduates have a 75% job satisfaction rate among recent graduates, rising to 80% with experience. Furthermore, another study affiliated with Vanderbilt University has found that artists in general are more likely to be satisfied with their lives, to be confident in the face of change, and to view themselves positively. Now, there are challenges associated with an arts degree. Despite similar earnings to many other fields, 38% of arts graduates express dissatisfaction with their earnings. And 40% of arts graduates work more than one job. These challenges are real. But to grab hold of them and use them to insist that the arts are a shortcut to an unhappy life, most data doesn't support that claim. Majoring in the arts makes you more likely, not less, to live a fulfilled life. I could go on. Now, I could tell you about creativity, how one IBM survey found that CEOs look to this more than any other skill or quality to solve the problems of our increasingly more unpredictable world market. I could tell you about unemployment, how the manner in which the Bureau of Labor Statistics calculates it may be biased against artists because many of them work project to project, not week by week. I could tell you about community involvement, how arts majors are 14 times more likely to volunteer within the arts and thus enrich the communities they settle down in. All of this and more. But the end message would be the same. In our country, we've never talked honestly about the arts and the potential of artistic careers. Instead, we've developed the myth of the starving artist. And this has dominated our conversations, creating misperceptions about the arts that are influencing people's lives and not for the better. My story is a good example. Almost everyone around me believed in the myth of the starving artist, and that had a strong impact on me. It almost made me a biology major. <laughs> and I hate biology. <laughs> I mean, I took one year of in high school, and it was all right, but, but math? No. I'm good at it, but I'm not happy about it. Yet that was almost my life, because I had been given a single narrative about the arts that told me theater couldn't suffice. From my friends in the theater department, I could tell you more stories. I'm not the only one who had to fight to declare my major. Many of the people in my department, and I'm sure in other artistic majors too, needed to overcome uncertainty and discouragement to be where they are today. For every story I've heard in the theater department too, I know there are also many other stories I'm never going to get to hear, because they are the stories of artists who have been lost. They are the stories in which our cultural myths about the arts prevail, in which young artists turn their backs on their passions because well-intentioned people around them encourage them to do so out of baseless concerns. Moving forward, I want that to end. People's choices about the arts should not be dominated by misinformation. So let's change the narrative. Let's dare to challenge what we think we know about the arts. Let's dare to revise our good intention to discouraging people from them. Let's dare to allow our children to make their own decisions about them. In other words, let's dare to dispel the myth of the starving artist. This will preserve innovation and creative thought in our country. And it will open the door for our children to study in one of the most compelling and fulfilling fields there is. Thank you.